tell us about the genesis of this project? Where did it begin? Uh, so this was a global team that ran in 2015. There were 350 uh, design teams that entered, and we, we won this project. And um, from there, then I had to go through government agency approval. And uh, after that aspect, we had to figure out how to do this uh, in a very short amount of time. Could you turn me up years. a bit? Can you hear me all right? Uh, yes, I'm just hearing you now. Uh, sorry, Sabin. So um, y y you've created this piece. Can you tell us a little? And it's obviously depicting soldiers uh, through the through the war and, and what they went through. Uh, do you have a particular uh, approach to this kind of thing? What is it that you were trying to convey through these depictions? Yeah, uh, it, you know, here's the thing. You get a giant project like this, and there's all these people that are jumping out. All of a sudden, everyone is a sculpture expert. And I had to hold on to my vision, which is very much based on the Renaissance idea that we are sculpting humanity. And from that perspective, I took the way that I work, which was working from a life model and then translating that into sculpture. Uh, I went out and got uh, actors and I dressed them up in um, real uniforms, actual uniforms. We found photographs in some of those uniforms of the people's family. Uh, I took 12,000 images and I ended up doing 18 iterations. Um, from that last iteration, we came up with a soldier's journey. So this is a story really about a father. That father is an allegory for the United States. Uh, it is also uh, a soldier. And it, it's the hero's journey where someone leaves home. So in this case, he left his, leaves his family behind, enters into the Brotherhood of Arms, um, and then leads a battle. And then from that battle becomes, uh, he, he's shell-shocked. And from that, that's the focus of the whole composition. Um, and then he returns home at the very end, handing his daughter his helmet. And that, that daughter and that helmet are a representation of World War II. So I, I think what was really important to do was make a project that an eighth grader could understand and would also be very exciting because look, let's face it, art has taken a beating. It's, it's, there's, there's no sense of value and sacredness anymore. And my sense was like, you need to do something really that elevates human spirit, talks about rising to the occasion and forget about victimization. This is about a, a sculpture about empowerment. Um, I ended up using real military men, people that had been in battle. I used six veterans as models, those models are on that bronze relief. So they will be immortalized forever. Their expressions show what it is to be a soldier and to do something that is, it's, it's daunting to, to enter into combat and then return home. I think a lot of people will be looking at that sculpture and thinking, wow, this does not look like your typical modern art piece. I think there's something in the modern art world where conceptual art, the idea of, uh, of something that doesn't raise us to the levels of the numinous, you know, doesn't sort of elevate the human spirit, that almost that kind of approach is, is mistrusted and seen as a bit outdated. I mean, do, do you think I'm right about that? Yeah, I think you're spot on when you say that. I think it, there's been a real effort to decimate anything of value or something that's sacred. Not, you need to forget about doing a story about human beings. It's not even part of the present narrative of what the art world can do. So this is a very rebellious act on my part. It's, it's meant to change the direction of art. And we've been going on around 100 years now, since World War I, where you had this decimation of how man perceived himself. If prior to World War I, there was a divine order. There was a sense of God. And all of a sudden, you know, 22 million people are decimated. Of course, we're going to get a different a view of, like, you know, us. It's one of alienation. It's where modernism actually starts. So we're coming full circle on this project. I'm taking it back to 100 years ago, when the war, just before the war, and I'm making something that has the great sense of unity here. Okay, we got 38 figures, but mind you, this is one sculpture. That sculpture speaks from 100 feet away or five feet away. There's an intimacy to it when you look at those human beings, and when you move back, you see the whole story unfold from left to right. And uh, you, that, that's not something that's going on today in the art world.
It's very interesting that, uh, I mean, when I see pieces of work like this, I think the word that springs to my mind is awe. You know, when you go into the Sistine Chapel, when you go to the Parthenon, I was recently at the Cathedral in Seville, and you see the artworks there, and, and you get filled with a sense of awe and wonder and the capability of, of, of humankind when it comes to art. Uh, and that seems to be something that, you, I mean, are you suggesting we might be able to reclaim uh, that kind of thing? Well, so why, why wouldn't we? It's like, it, 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 you're saying it exactly the way I would say it. Art represents us. How do we want to be represented? I, I don't really want to be represented by a bunch of cinder blocks on the ground on the floor. I want to be represented by something that's, you know, really amazing. It's all inspiring. And I really like that you bring up Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. Uh, he played a really big part in, in me getting a clear head about what I should do. So it, in my studio, in my studio, I have a, um, in the bathroom area, I have a poster of the Sistine Chapel, the, at the Last Judgment, actually. And in the beginning of the project, everybody's saying, okay, we want more barbed wire. We want more horses. We want more men running over the top. We want more biplanes. And my head's, you know, it's about to explode. I have smoke coming out my ears. And, and, and so I, I go look at this poster and I hear in my head, do what you know. And I looked at that poster. It's like humanity, it all pretzeled together, advancing and receding in space. Every one of us will meet our maker, you know? And, and I looked at that poster and I said, I'm going to do that with the World War I Memorial. So the World War I Memorial is the interdigitation of all these figures, all showing the different emotions that run and course through human beings, from heroism to fear to sadness. You know, all these things are things that are intangible. And I have made them physically present in reality in a bronze sculpture to explain who we are, a hundred years ago, but the beauty is, and it's not really a beautiful thing when you think about it, these wars continue on. The war to end all wars is really, it hasn't ended. And so you have veterans now that will come to this in our country, Afghanistan, Iraq, you know, some from the Korean War and Vietnam War, and they will see their story within this because it's a historical piece, don't get me wrong on that, they're wearing the uniforms of those World War I soldiers, but a, any soldier, even one from the UK and Britain who comes to see this piece will recognize his story within it. And I think that's really important to connect with human beings. And finally, if you could just tell us about where it's gonna be unveil, uh, unveiled and, and when. All right, so then this is um, on September 13th of this year. Um, I, would, I, I will be unveiling and what we're going to do is we're going to do a candlelit vigil. Um, I expect a lot of veterans to show up for that vigil. The sun sets at 719 that night, and it is at Pershing Park, which is 150 yards away from the White House. And this is a moment that we will recognize the soldiers that have fought and given of themselves physically and mentally. Many of them come back, you know, not not whole. And this is a way to give back to a service that is truly sacred, because there is no, there's nothing more noble than to give of oneself for one country. And I, I just want to mention here, the biggest thing that I learned through this project was to be in service of something larger than oneself is what gives you empowerment. It gives you the sense to proceed forward because you are not just relying on your own ego and your own self. And this is a value that extends back in history. So I'm playing forward history and I'm saying Western civilization does have a role in proceeding forward. It is about us. Why would we cancel that?